Welcome to the Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast. Jacob Dahlin here. I'm your host. And today from Fallen, Sweden, Marcus Schellhammer. Welcome to the po podcast. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yep. So you and I have a little bit of a of a of a background from Fallen. Uh, my son Eric played there with you and and uh, new J18 region coach, uh, head coach, I should say. You've been an assistant coach there in strength and conditioning for a while. And we'll talk about Fallen um, quite a bit. Um, what what I thought would be good, you've got a we'll we'll get a um, background, uh, your background and ha how you ended up in Canada and played juniors over there. Uh, talk a little bit about university since you're a student in uh, Dalanas University in Fallen. And uh, and then also talk about your role as a head coach in a quote unquote small market team in a big, big pond of J18 region West. Uh, that's got some powerhouses and it's a tough, uh, tough challenge for sure. What do you think about that? Uh, that sounds great. All right. So originally not from Fallen, but I know that you have gotten influenced by Dalana and the, in your dialect um, <laughs> from Örebro, right? Um, yeah, I, I guess you could say so. I've uh, kind of struggled uh, throughout my my journey in life to say where you know, like where I'm from. Um, but um, but yeah, I guess you could say I went to high school in Örebro. So uh, to simplify the answer, yes, that's that's where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. And then, so, and, and you played, uh, so you played hockey gymnasium in Örebro? Uh, nope. Yeah, I didn't, didn't uh, play hockey gymnasium, just went to a regular, um, regular high school there. But then you played hockey at the same time. Uh, right. While you were there in high school. Yep. Yep. That's right. And, uh, and for you that, when you meet um, Marcus, not 6'5", 220, <laughs> right but five nine one seventy five is what elite prospects have you asked yeah that that's a very generous number to be honest <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll take it you know <laughs> yeah my, my point is that you're not the biggest guy out there but um uh but it's it's interesting that you're now in in university and you've been working with fallen as an organization both as an assistant coach and in strength and conditioning. So, so we'll get there and talk about Fallen. But how did you end up in Canada? A little bit. So this was back, you know, eight or nine years ago, because you're still a young guy. But and 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 your your playing career is over. But um, uh, or your serious playing career, I guess I should say. How talk about how you ended up in Almagen Spartans. I'll have in Spartans. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, it 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 kind of really just it happened. Um, I was, uh, uh, you know, it, it, the years go by quick, so it was it was a few years, <laughs> a few years ago. Um, uh, but it was just at the end of my uh my last year of high school there. I think it was in in the springtime. Uh, uh, the the general manager of the team, you know, just reached out to me. Um, uh, they were a new new organization in the gmhl then and uh, uh we're looking for players and uh you know i heard uh i heard they had a couple other swedes uh on the roster who were going over there so i guess that kind of sparked my interest um you know playing playing juniors in, in Urubu, um you know big big hockey city uh tough you know tough competition there as well so um, yeah, I, I, I guess I just decided kind of on a limb to, to, to head out over there and, and see what that was like. And, so, so when, uh, I, when I'm pulling up their roster, uh, from that year, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Swedish guys on that team. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was, uh, that, that was, it was a really weird experience coming over there because it was like, I mean, you, you know, you definitely, you definitely weren't alone. Nobody really knew what to expect and, and you kind of just did it, you know, as a, as a group together. So. Yeah. And then a, a guy from Finland who led the, led the team in scoring as well. Um, so talk exactly. about, yeah. So, so you ended up going over there. 
um, and um, let's talk about that that um, experience. Because um, was that the first time away from home? Yeah, yeah, it would it would be. What was yeah. what was your what was your first impression when you when you went there? Um, I mean, it was it was just it was it was a it was a, it's tough to put into words really because um obviously you get there you know you get your you get your billet family um which was great um i i had i had it pretty 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 good when we had you know i was living with two other swedish players so in a, a pretty nice uh decent sized home with a nice you know um, billet family so it was a really like great and welcoming experience there and, and and this just to be clear too so the gmhl is is around the toronto area geographically right yeah you you could say so um i think i'm not i know the league has maybe changed a little bit more now geographically um but uh so almaguen is just not it's not far from far from north bay ontario okay it's about it's about a 4 hour drive from from toronto Okay, but it's not it's not Saskatchewan or or you know somewhere out. No. Um, I, I mean it's it, Canada can be so different geographically, so I think it's important to be able to explain where that was. Yeah, um, most teams were within, within like a an six to seven hour drive, I guess. Yeah, what was your first? Uh, when you came from Otterbro and then you came over there from a hockey perspective, how, how different was the hockey? Uh, for me, it was, it was very different. Um, it was a, it was definitely a, a faster pace. It was a lot more physical. Um, you know, I might also have been, you know, like the team atmosphere I was in, it was, uh, you know, it was, you, you were out like competing every practice, um, you know, trying to get a spot in the lineup and, and yeah, I just feel like the, I guess the atmosphere there was a little bit more, you know, competitive and, and set a little bit higher, like, um, standards than what I was used to back in Sweden, I guess. Yeah. And, and so you had, you know, you've been with a bunch of different teams there in, in the GMHL and, you know, when I see GMHL, you know, it's kind of a renegade league in the in and but there's some really good teams in there. Um, you know, we've had Johan Eriksson on a couple of times actually as a guest who's who works with Bradford Rattlers, who's been a top team in the last while. And when you look at the roster that they have there, they got some incredible players um uh that are on there. We we had Jokob Rodin that played J20 national and uh, Ericsson, Jesper Ericsson that played in Brunas that, that played, you know, J20 national went over to play GMHL. Yes. They were top scorers in that league, but explain kind of the difference between the top teams and let's say the bottom teams and how that may differ out there. Yeah. So, um, Cause you've got experience with both. <laughs> yeah, I, de yeah, definitely. Um, it, and it's, I guess you can say that there, there's a big difference between the top teams and the, and the bottom team, so to speak. Um, but it's, uh, it all, I mean, it all comes down to kind of like what players they're recruiting and, uh, you know, if it's a new team, if they've uh, had their organization established for a longer period of time, um, they'll have kind of, you know, just, better resources and everything. Um, so yeah, a big, uh, big difference. Um, and you also shows in, in the, in the game, the results of the games, you know, you have quite a big, you know, like big scoring games, um, when, you know, a top team meets a bottom team. Um, and, and talk about your experience then, cause I know you had a mixed bag too. You got traded, you requested a trade talk yeah. about that for what you can you know without you know i don't want you to bad mouth the team but at the same time you know your experience of going through that because I'm, I'm sure they shaped you as a as a young hockey player young person yeah i definitely did um it's you know as a as a swede uh coming over to you know a league where you can all of a sudden be traded is uh 
or cut or cut yeah um it's it's really different it's you know we don't have it here it's and it's you know when you get that i you know you get that first call like hey you know marcus with you know you're you're going to go over to this team um I, it's it's pretty scary you know to be honest um but at the same time you know i you know, i wasn't obviously very happy with um certain things you know in in, in that club so um it was kind of exciting at the same time yeah but then um, you have to get uprooted from your billet family and yeah. head on over to how far how far was that the first time you went from went to uh north york or right yeah um yeah it's, so that's north york is just outside of toronto um kind of northern suburb uh so so it's like a four-hour drive you know you're yeah. changing environments you know completely going from um you know almaguin which is like a city of you know a thousand people really in the middle of nowhere northern ontario um you know going down to the suburbs of toronto so uh how did different. you how did you actually because i it just just uh came to my mind here like so how did you when you got traded how did you actually physically transport yourself because you don't have a car nope so how did you get to north york um i it's funny you asked this because you just brought up you know a uh an image in my head um i got basically put on a greyhound bus um uh, with my suitcase and my hockey gear and um you know it was just like see you later i i you know i had no idea what i was going to or anything like that um just headed down there and and you know yeah uh, did you even have a cell phone at the time with yeah, like uh, international plan back then or how was that no i had and we all got all the swedes got a uh or all the foreigners got got like a pay pay as you go card <laughs> um so we all had you know we had that at, at the very least oh gosh um i can remember <laughs> it makes me think about you know um, so so what did you what did you how did you put that to your parents who was you know all right marcus is playing in canada i guess that's fine and then you make the call saying hey i got traded what did they say because you're still you're still what 19 18 19 or something yeah yeah i would have been 18 uh, probably yeah 18 years old yeah and uh i mean i don't remember exactly how that call went uh i probably just tried to kind of calm them down a bit <laughs> yeah well i the reason i bring that what I, what what makes me think about that because my son was he was in in gothenburg last year and his cell plan went out on midnight and he was going home to sweden and he uh he left mundal at midnight to get on a bus to get on a train to get to the train station who had a bus leaving from the train station at 2 30 in the morning he had no cell plan at the time to make it to copenhagen's airport to catch a flight to north carolina mm -hmm. and for a moment my wife and i were kind of looking at each other because he got into wi-fi um range uh at the um at the uh, train station and said there's absolutely no one here uh it's dark nothing's open i don't know where to go to get on the bus and we kind of felt just a little bit bad as parents for a moment <laughs> yeah. for a moment and then then he found out oh wait a minute someone's coming they're opening something and then he figured out you know he doesn't know any swedish and uh and those type of things um but you know as a parent when your kid is that far away, you kind of, you kind of wonder if <laughs> if you made the right decision to allow yeah. your kid to go uh, 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 across the Atlantic to go play. Now, now it, it, we kind of had the same conversation about um, he's coming home for Christmas and, and uh, you know, well, I mean, it's not a big deal. You just have to catch a bus or whatever, make it to, uh, to the airport and you'll figure it out. <laughs> But, um, 
So uh, I, I can imagine what your parents went through then. Yeah. But then you ended up back in, in the same team again the next season. Yep. Yeah, so I did. Did they trade? Um, they they wanted you back? You know, I guess so. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, my time my time in in that league is, is a little – a little rough when you look at you know the my elite prospects but uh yeah, well it's not yet it's not like you had 60 points a game no exactly but that's okay that's okay and then you got a little bit of experience in the na3 in the u.s uh, yeah um and uh and then three different teams in in um in the gmhl so at at some point you're kind of like all right i've, I've so you did three years in Canada, which is pretty long time. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, how would you, how would you sum it up? Uh, they go by pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, I mean, I would sum it up as a great experience. I think, uh, I kind of, you know, what the years came to realize that, you know, I was probably doing it more for fun than anything else. Um, and I guess that's why I kept doing it as as well for for a couple of years or for a few years. Um, but yeah, and then uh, and then your your parents uh, or part of your family is in the U.S. or I can't remember how it was, right? Because yeah. you've been over here and in, in so it's not super unfamiliar for your family. No, no. Uh, my dad's from the states, so um, you know they they spend some time living. They live there right now. They live in Florida. Uh, I've got a uh, you know a brother and a sister in the U.S. as well, so um, we all we're all kind of grown up uh, all over the place. Like, you know, moved moved uh, moved around a lot um, as kids. So yeah. yeah. So at what point did did you start thinking about all right, <laughs> I've had my fun. I guess I need to get a degree and and quote unquote grow up. Yeah, I mean that's. Uh, for me personally I, you know it, it, it took a few years um i uh at the end of my well when i, when I decided to, to i guess you say quit uh was you know i just i found a, a school and a program that i found interesting um it's uh, in, in swedish you call it a folk hug school mm -hmm. um, it's hard to find a translation for that into English, I guess maybe like a community college type of type of program, yeah. um, and it was you know like a a a, a personal training like uh like fitness um and uh like nutrition program, yeah, uh, at a little school outside Stockholm. So uh, that's really what got me to 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 lay off hockey for a little bit, and um, I always had you know I always had that interest too, um of like strength strength and conditioning training um alongside you know my hockey my years as as a junior hockey player so it, it kind of just came naturally to me yeah and um uh, because i'm but you but you did that and then you ended up so how did you end up in in fallen in dollarna at, at the dollarna's university did you go there because of the school or did you go to the hockey part first um, I, I went there because of the school. Um, I was, um, yeah, I, I was a few years ago, I was, uh, kind of, you know, looking to, to take another path, I guess, in, in life or find, you know, some, something else. Um, and I was looking at education, you know, both, both in the U S and, and, uh, Sweden and, um, uh, yeah, just decided to kind of apply for a few different schools, programs here in Sweden um that were um uh, you know exercise science programs yeah and uh yeah it was you know I didn't really know where where in Sweden I wanted to go and it just ended up being being here in Fallen really so explain to those because you know if you live in the U.S. Fallen is not necessarily something that is well known to I think a lot of people in Sweden knows where Fallen is, and we'll talk about why. But how would how would you describe Fallen for those who come from Canada and and the U.S.? 
yeah, it's a, it, it's a small, uh, it's a smaller town, um, in really in the, in the middle of Sweden, uh, I mean, it's it's probably it's it's probably bigger than a town right yeah it's a smaller I mean, city i guess it's a smaller say. city but you wouldn't call it a big city i mean if you compare Örebro to Falun, Örebro is much bigger right yeah 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 it's a lot bigger um but but it's but it's a i think it's the 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 the, the seat the the um um county seat so to speak of Dalarna or the parish of Dalarna which there's a bunch of them in Sweden but but a very historic um city from a standpoint of the history of of behind it yeah um by the sounds of it you might know more than of that than <laughs> I do but <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to pull it out of you here what what else is what else do you think if you were to explain fallen to those that is unique about Fallen from a sports perspective. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very close. So it's like deep in the heart of nature of the, the forest and everything here. Uh, so uh, it's very big in, in uh, cross country skiing uh, probably um, more so than others, but yeah, it's, it's a big uh, winter, winter sports. Uh, city, I guess you could yeah, yeah, and I think that when I was living in Sweden, they were applying at the time to get the Olymp the Winter Olympics. They were they were at the, you know, applying. So when the, I think it was when Alberville won it, Fallen was competing to get the Winter Olympics, which is yeah. which is kind of unique back then. I don't know how in the heck they would have pulled it off, but but um, but 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 so on. And what about hockey in? as an example hockey is not necessarily the sport that is the most popular sport in in fallen in that city no uh not not really it, it's uh i mean you way men, in the you past mentioned, you mentioned cross-country skiing so they have a the uni, the um university and the high school you have a lot of top athletes that can come there for that yeah and then the, se the second biggest sport would probably be uh um um uh, what do you call it uh floor hockey or uh, in the floor bundy ball. yeah floor yeah, ball, floor ball. Or, or i was looking at bundy which yeah we should have a separate episode just to talk about bundy because nobody knows what bundy is which is kind of hockey on a big soccer field uh yeah. with a big we used to be an orange ball i think it's pink now um yeah yeah but that i mean those are the two sports um I guess soccer in the summertime and and track and field is big in in summer but but I think from a from a general standpoint sports and outdoors and you know um is is a big deal in the city I would say yeah definitely and, and they have the uh, tour de ski in the winter time and the and the big world cup of of uh, cross country skiing they got the big uh, ski jump right next to the to the hockey rink there and yeah yeah and and a big athletic complex so from a facilities perspective i mean i would i would say so the area is called lungnet a lot of cities and towns would be jealous of what you guys have there yeah uh yeah no i agree i was it was pretty exciting when i saw it first it's a it's a really nice area and um no, I've I've I talked to uh, I was I was in a, on an educational like course through the hockey association here uh, a few weeks ago, and I was talking to uh, uh, Thomas Pananen, who's uh, who's with the U seventeen national uh, team, and yep. he was saying like this it's his favorite place to come to have a, a training camp is here in Fallen, um, because of the facilities and everything around it, um, that's why they keep coming here. Year yeah. After. Yeah, we were when we were there in the in in last summer. They had the J eighteen national team was there for a camp, um, yeah, uh, as well. I guess they're yeah. they're coming back every year. Um, but okay, so let's let's move into and and then your your university or the Dalanas University is right there next to the rink, um, almost building next to it, and and the city is right there where you can just walk or bike or take the bus to everything so 
living in Fallen is easy, right? I mean, it's it's a small place, it's a small town from that perspective with access to really everything. Um, but let's talk about uh, your role now. So you're taking over. You've been kind of strength and conditioning, working with the junior teams, both J both J18 and J20. So be you one son who was the head coach, uh, longtime player in the SHL. He kind of is the uh, responsible for the juniors from the from the school perspective. Was the head coach, uh, the A team or the the pro team uh, who got moved up to Division One, who's had a tough time, which everybody knew that they were going to have a tough time competing. The coaches uh, they had a coaching change. And they called to Ben and said, hey, will you take over the team? And then they walk us through how did that, um, how did you get asked to be the head coach? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of came out of uh, out of nowhere, a little bit as a surprise. Um, like you said, they, they had to, they had to uh, find a new coach there at the men's team in Hokietan. Um and, uh, you know, he got called up and, uh, you know, I was, I guess, just the next guy in line um, and kind of a little bit how it works in, in like the smaller clubs or smaller organizations is also because of, uh, you know, the costs of having a team, you know, move up a level to hook yet done. It's, um, it's a league where, it, you know, it does take, it does cost a little bit more uh, with travels and whatnot. And um uh, they're just trying to find uh, an option within the club too, and not having to, you know, bring anyone else in. So, yeah, the uh, big the the big budget uh, they they didn't have the big budget to 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 get the players to, to play at that level. They basically have a division two team playing in the third division um, for the first yeah. year, and uh, so going out and adding a big name coach, um, not, not as easy. You got, you want got up and love on the market now from you, Gordon, but, um, you know, yeah. Uh, his salary is probably not, not necessarily in the budget either, but so, but here you are, I mean, last year in university, you're, you're, you're going to school in sports performance, um, kind of sports exercise. I mean, you want to stay in this. So it's, I mean, for you, it's gotta be a, a, perfect opportunity you've already had two years of experience coaching these guys and here you're handed a team with not a whole lot of expectations just a lot of upside that's the way I see it yeah no uh, that's that's kind of how I see it too um for sure. and you already had the relationship with all the players right um yeah 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 so just uh it's month of November now. So, you know, I've been assistant coach from the start of the season and uh, yeah. So, you know, I knew, I know all the players very well. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the league that you're in J 18. So right now you got the O sixes and O sevens um, that are first and second year in uh, high school, right? Yep. Um, and a lot of these guys are coming in uh so in j18 region west where you play uh so if you pull up uh stats dot sweet hockey uh or if you just google it you'll find the teams that you're playing against but the top top teams i would i mean other than the stockholm region um last year's national champion champion was out i believe right yep yeah that's uh, right you play against Örebro, you play against Färjestad, Mura, uh, Västerås, Brynäs, Leksand. Uh, those are probably the, I mean, those are six top teams that have NIUs. Um, and then you got some of the small, smaller clubs like Grums, Valbo. Who am I missing? Um, uh, Strömsbro. Karlsko and Karlskoga. Yep. Um, I would I would put Carl Skulga up there as one of the top teams as well, even though they don't play in the SHL. Always have a solid, solid team. Yeah, yeah. But you're not really competing. So let's talk about this because I think it's important. You're not really competing at the same with the same um, on the same level. You don't have the same resources as Fadiestad or or Mura or. Uh, bro. 
no yeah no so so it's you know it's a big difference on on many levels um you know both both you know like the organization obviously it's we've got um our our pro team or our men's team you know in in the third division you know we're playing against shl uh clubs so uh, the the budget difference is obviously uh, a lot bigger and uh but also and therefore the staff too right but yeah. talk about talk about your staff that you have now now when tuba has gone yeah so um i mean the staff that we have really we're, we're two we're two coaches taking over so we went from a <laughs> a three man coaching system to to me and um uh, the other assistant coach so um that that's you know pretty much what we have to work with um, yeah but at the but but on the other hand what you have to offer is amazing facilities you can get as much ice time in fallen as you can in lexon right yeah yeah pretty much um you know that that all you know gets it all comes around to to the the school hockey too here too right the hockey gymnasium um and even though there's a difference between the NIU and the LIU or LIP as some schools are called now um, yeah they're like the you know the the amount of ice time is pretty much or like the practice time is is pretty similar from what we have to to what some of the top clubs have as well yeah, obviously the resources around that is a little bit different, but like when it comes down to like the amount of time you get to spend on ice, you know, practicing things is it's not that different, really. So if you are and I think that that that's that goes well with this thing about the what is a player that is going to be attracted to Fallen that is going to be uh, I tell me if you agree with this, because the top recruit isn't going to come to Fallen. The top recruit is going to be recruited by those SHL teams uh, and 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 they're going to be offered, you know, the, the path to be able to get into J18 region, be pulled up to J20 national and hopefully go into, go into um, uh, SHL or Allsvenskan teams, right? But yeah. um, not, you know, they only have so many spots. So so out of all these teams, a huge thing about it is that you're not a J18 Division One. You have a J. Do you still have a J18 Division One and a region? So you have two teams. Yep. Yep. Right. You have the school, so you can still go to an LIU hockey gymnasium and get the education and get the development and ice time there. So you may not be a top recruit, but you have all the ability to develop and you're you can come here and have a major role in this team where you may be a fourth liner in this team and you may be a top pairing or a top liner on this team and you're probably going to get a lot more minutes on your team versus that team and uh, facilities are great. The coaching, of course, is great right now. Uh, uh, it's, it's good to, I mean, so, so yeah, you may not have all the bells and whistles, but I think for the, for that individual, the hard worker that wants to develop, um, uh, yes, you're not going to be able to compete. If you look at the, the games that, that you play, you, you're not competing at the same level from a results perspective, but from a development standpoint, um, it's not a bad place to go. No, not at all. Not at all. So, so how does that, how does that make you look at that from a standpoint of, of recruitment? Um, Cause you're looking for a specific individual, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're looking for the, for the individuals that are still, you know, that, that still have a goal in mind and are, you know, hungry for, to reach that goal, I guess. Um, and, and, you know, we're looking for a lot of the players that don't get into the NIUs really um, is kind of like, you know, you know, their second option is to come to a club like ours or um, some of our, uh, you know, competitors out there too. Yeah. Uh, in the NIU scene. So, 
And then you also have a J20 team that plays in in the in the third division for J20. It plays in Division One, right? Yeah, yeah. And and so if you're, you know, if you're a, a stud in J18, you're also going to be able to play in the J20 games. Right, right. So yeah, we have you know we have a few players that have been playing um, almost every game with the J20 team this this season and. You know, you know, they are in, like you said, the third uh, division of, of J20. Um, they were they were in the second division a couple of years ago, but got um, relegated. Um, but, yeah, it's it's still a good opportunity to, you know, get a few more games. And and even though, you know, it's at at that level, it's still you know, like it's still a next step. You're playing against guys that are a little bit older, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more experienced. So. So how do you how do you look at since you've been kind of working intimately with these guys in strength and conditioning? How do you look at then uh, the the ability to get one of these guys where you can you can you know work super hard on the ice and off the ice? How how important is the off the off the ice portion that 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 you were kind of concentrating on? Yeah, I mean it, it's it's really. I think it's a it's a key, especially for this age age group of guys. Um, you know, we have there's a big difference when you look at the guys that come in, you know, like year one and two NIU or LIU, and uh, and you know the year twos or the year threes. Um, but also, you know, more specifically for our club and our school here is um, the guy that the um, the what do you call it? Um, the um, experiences yeah they the experiences that they have are so varying um you know some of them come from you know like even smaller clubs um uh, in, in you know our local area um and some come from bigger clubs but yeah the strength and conditioning uh, part is um for a lot of guys a little bit new um and something that they they might be like lacking a little bit more yep so in order for them to, to you know take the next step into J twenty or whatever their goal is, um, it's yeah, it's something that they might have to to look a little bit more into or, or work a little bit more at. So yeah. So the other part, and let's round this out here with the with with the the other bullet point that I have here. Um, you know, unfortunately in Sweden there is no college hockey system uh post juniors right but you're coaching a team so right you're there the same amount as the players are um uh one could argument argue that being a coach is a lot more time commitment than as being a player but but what stops i mean it just seems like that there's very few people that are combining uh being a student and athletics in Sweden um, versus, I mean, I know that there's the college system over here is bigger and, you know, um, it's just a completely different ball game, but um, you're doing it right. Why doesn't everybody do it? Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. And I've, during my, my years here doing both school and, and coaching, it's, it's been a, like a great experience and I, I've been wondering why uh, uh, there aren't more both players and coaches doing that um, especially you know like my experience here um, working or studying you know exercise science and like sports performance specifically having that alongside with you know both like the 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 L, um, LIU and the the club like, like team practices and everything it's been like such such a good fit being able to like learn things on the side and then kind of try to apply them and yep. um whatnot to to the program so um but yeah you should, you, you should be a good ambassador for Dalarnas university to say hey more people ought to apply here that are in the system so to speak not just after you're done playing yeah, uh, I, yeah, I should be. Um, you know, actually, the 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 other coach that I work with now, he he just moved here for the same reason. So he's 
he just started his uh the same program here at the high school or the university that i did and yeah so he, he's on the same path interestingly enough yeah that that's good uh that's a good good way to recruit new good coaches and in, in into the program so so all right so where do you think um uh where do you think uh this is now going because i mean you you now are in a unique position to get this experience as a head coach but your 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 education is about over after this year uh where do you want to go or what do you want to do is this something that you want to keep doing uh for the rest of your life or for the next foreseeable future um, yeah, I definitely feel like I want to continue down uh, a similar path. I, I'm not, I've never been like super sure on what I want to do. Uh, so I've, I've kind of been just, you know, taking it like one year at a time. Um, but uh, I, you know, I've, I've kind of really liked the, the, the studying uh, that I've been doing lately. And, and I've thought about maybe combining for another two years and, uh, uh, getting you know a, a a master's in in uh something within the training field. So, um, can you get that within the same university? No, unfortunately not. Um, my you could either I could either either move to another um school to do it or do it like an online um online program too. Okay. Um. So yeah, I've been looking into some different options and and we'll see. But yeah, definitely interested in combining um that with with more hockey. Yeah. Well, I mean, your background and 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 the experiences that you've had and and still being young and you've got the ability to to relate um and you've got this kind of sandbox of that you can play in uh while while studying so yeah it's a it's it's a sweet spot that i think other people should take advantage of all right last couple of questions here we always ask the guests you met yourself at 17 uh so what things did you not know then that that you know now that you uh that you would tell yourself as an advisor to yourself um i mean if we're talking you know kind of hockey related i guess it would be probably being more um what do you call it uh like knowing like what kind of like where you want to go with it uh because i was never really sure what i wanted you know like where i wanted to go within hockey you know um so i think maybe asking you yourself that question is you know am i doing kind of this for fun or or am i like you know really trying to make something out of this um because that that's kind of going to set you know your you know your 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 path yeah your path so what about uh, life uh not hockey what about life i mean i guess the same thing could be applied to that too but uh uh to life i would say um just kind of like i did uh, don't you know don't be so like worried about um the future and where you're going to be at in like one to two years. Um, cause you know, like, like I tell a lot of people now, you know, I started uh university and, uh, when I was 25 years old, so it's definitely never too late to, to take a path, you know, down, down the study road. Um, I know it's more common here in Sweden than it is in, in North America, but, but, uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely encourage a lot of people to, to, to do something similar yeah all right and last thing here you know we've lately in year two when we did this podcast it's crazy it recorded close to 80 episodes now and started off kind of as a fun thing to do and and the, the mission is still to educate and inform people about swedish junior hockey and swedish junior hockey players and and for swedish junior hockey players um <clears throat> but um, you know, this this opportunity came up about how do we help these organizations? So Target Aid has a platform that we we um, are part of. So if you go to targetaid.com, you'll see, uh, and then you you look for Swedish Junior Hockey. We're there. So every guest has the ability to kind of uh, be a a little subsection under uh, under the area of 
the club of my in my heart, club uh, benimetiata, organization in my heart. So, which is which organization are you gonna are you gonna put your banner or or or, or put down there to be under? I mean, that is is such a tough question for me because I've just kind of been all over the place, right? Um, <laughs> There's not a wrong answer here. I it, it can be anywhere, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll have to go with uh with Arabru. Uh, okay, Arabru is yeah. the, and 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 here's kind of the common theme. Most people that I've talked to has been kind of you know the team that is always this is the jersey that I have on the wall kind of thing, right? And so what we're going to do, uh, the funny thing is, Marcus, uh, um, I mean, um, um, we had, um, uh, oh gosh, Malte Hasselgen, his yeah. brother Philip plays on on the Division One team or hockey yeah. team there in Fallen now, but Malte played in in uh, in Fallen and he grew up, grew up in Brinas, but he kind of got, you know, overlooked by Brinas. Yeah, yeah. So he did not mention Brinas and the team of him in his heart was was fallen. And um you know, uh so so that's good. So what we'll do, what we'll do, we'll make sure that that you're highlighted there uh under Arbru or Arbru gets a, a a mention uh and and we'll help Arbru with some content there. And uh, it'll be on our site. And uh, the whole point about it is to give attention, content to hopefully help that club with with fundraising, uh, and 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 um, and and like I said, content there. So, uh, yeah. thank you for for jumping on this. Uh, it's been good to catch up uh, a little bit offline as well. And um, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. I know you're going to have a little tough row here be between now and Christmas. Then the top five teams move on, maybe? Yep, or yep, top five move on. Top five moves on, and they're going to say, oh, thank goodness I don't have to play them anymore. Uh, okay. And uh, and then you're going to play, is it six or seven, seven teams? Yeah, seven remaining teams. Seven remaining teams play until the end of the year, and and I think the top team from there gets like a wild card in the national, yeah. J18 national the rest right. fight for avoiding relegation. Yeah. Uh, it's always uh, going to be a kind of a fun thing there. Um, but uh, good luck the rest of the season. Yeah, no, thanks a lot. And uh, thanks for having me on. All right. Thanks. Thanks.